again everyone it's Brian happy Monday to those who celebrate Mondays it's nice to see you again today I'm going to do random records number three in which I use the Discogs site to select some random records and then um, say something about them um, so I'm using the another computer I'm going to use the random item generator make a note of it pull them off the shelf come back here and uh, spend a few minutes telling you about them. As I said before, if it's a, a CD, I'll probably skip it. If it's something I've shown recently, I might skip it as well, but um, so let's go. All right, so I'm gonna pull these five off the shelf. I had a couple CDs, so I did a, a new, um, generated a new random item. So I'm gonna pick these up and uh, I'll be back in a minute. All right, welcome back. I have pulled the things off the shelf, which took longer than I thought because I'm always looking in the wrong, <laughs> the wrong cube, the wrong cube for it, but I finally pulled them all out. Um, I probably never mentioned this before, but I am a fan of 12 inch singles. I have quite a lot of them, but really only from bands I like, although I have some that, you know, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't have them except they came to me in a, in a bunch or they were irresistibly cheap in a thrift shop. And so the first one that came up is a 12 inch single from uh, a guy called Howard Jones. You know I love you, don't you? This is the Dance in the Field mix. Uh, it also includes an instrumental version of that track and something called Dig This Well Deep. Now, to be honest, I can't remember anything about Dig This Well Deep. You know I love you, don't you? is from the Howard Jones album One to One, which is pictured here. Uh, 1986. Yeah, I'm not a giant Howard Jones fan, but I, I, I kind of like his... Uh, his popular songs, they they're, remind me of a certain time and they're kind of enjoyable. I think he's now in more of a techno guy. I think when he played in Toronto a few years back, um, the reviews were discussing how he um, his more recent stuff is techno. So he played the oldies first, then he moved into the more new, the newer stuff. But I don't, I don't mind him. Um, he wouldn't make my top, maybe wouldn't even take, make my top 100 of favorite artists, but um, you know, I have it for whatever reason. I don't remember the last time I played it, but I have some other stuff from him too. The second thing that came up is a 10 inch single from XTC. I'm a big XTC fan. I have, uh, I don't, I'm gonna say I haven't, I don't have a complete collection, but I have a pretty extensive collection of, of XTC. It says file under teen groups, which I believe is a joke because I don't think, <laughs> I don't know if you'd call this a teen group. 10 inch single for the price of a 7 inch single in stereo. So this is ball and chain. Flip sides are No Thugs in Our House and Punch and Judy. Now I would choose No Thugs in Our House as a better track than Ball and Chain. And they're from English Settlement, which I would say is either the best or the second best XTC record, depending on the day of the week. Um, yeah, the ball and chain lyrics are actually printed here. One thing you might not know about this. Oh, this is apparently limited edition, but I don't know how rare this can be because I see this all the time. It's everywhere. And it is actually on green vinyl. You probably can't tell. It's very um, like translucent green vinyl. If you hold it up to a light, you'll see that it's on green vinyl. So that's uh, pretty cool because I'm a fan. Right, let's move on to the next one. Next thing that came up is from Tom Petty, and this is Highway Companion, his third solo record after Full Moon Fever and Wildflowers. I left this slipcase on just for a moment so I can show you something on the back, and that is that the price tag is still here. I don't know if you can see that, but it says $9.99. So <laughs> I bought this for $9.99, and it was on sale. On top of that, there was, I think, 10 or 15% off, so $9 or, or less. Um, <laughs> and this is the first, pressing from 2006. Uh, when I paid the nut, the price I paid for it, which is around $9, um, to get a copy of this uh, pressing on Discogs, it was, I think, $175, $200. I think it's probably still in that range. Now, it's been repressed, of course, so uh, but I don't know what the value of this is. It has a little bit of shelf wear. As you can see here, this corner is a little bit bent. It must have been dropped somehow, but the vinyl's in perfect shape. and. Uh, it's it's in, it's in really really good shape and uh, let me see if I can pull up the the inner has this or this insert there's Tom Petty and it has uh, the lyrics here this was uh, I guess you call it one of my best finds ever <laughs> and it's actually a really good record I do like Tom Petty 
I think I have pretty much everything he's released um, and I think it's great so I recommend that if you like Full Moon Fever and Wildflowers you'd like that too uh, the next thing came up is from a band that um, people really go crazy about I I like this this band but I'm not I'm not a hundred percent behind them it's it's Steely Dan Asia in fact back in the day I had friends who loved this group and I didn't get it for years now I sort of understand it now and I I remember I took a I, I, I took a course in um, history of rock music and this band is noted for being very um, perf uh, very being perfectionist in terms of recording and sound and I watched the documentary on this on this record it was about an hour long of how they fussed about every little aspect of this record so I, now I listen to it, I realize I realize that that you know the sound is amazing, the care they took in making this record is amazing, and I do like the songs. You know, Peg was was the big a big hit on here, but Asia itself, Deacon Blues, these are great songs. But uh, I'm not like a fanatic about Steely Dan, though I managed to have pretty much everything else they've released. So maybe I maybe I am, and just I'm unwilling to admit it. Uh, and I think I have two copies of this, so I, I don't know how that happened. I think one was from a thrift shop. So one was a two dollar record, and mayb't they both were i don't re I don't remember, but yeah, this is not bad. I don't really like the album cover. I think this is noted as a as a cover that is um great or unique i don't I don't love it, but that could just be me. The last one that came up is um magazine. This is Magic Murder and the Weather. This is Howard Devoto's band. This was their fourth record, and then they disappeared and reformed in the in the 2000s. So I've always thought of this as their last record, though there is one other, as far as I know, that came out sometime in the 2000s that I've never heard. There were some singles from this record, and I'm going to be hard-pressed to remember what they were. I think About the Weather was one. So lucky. This is from 1987. Um, you know, I don't mind this. If you listen to them back-to-back -back with the other magazine releases, of course, this will sound less interesting. Um, the other ones I think are the ones that came before this I think are better but this is actually pretty good and mine doesn't have any inserts or anything but it does have this I guess it's pink pink labels here yeah. so pretty good um, I don't have the later stuff as I mentioned but I think I have everything else and they're um, an interesting band so what else can I say about that I don't have a lot to say about these because you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But that is my contribution to uh, Random Records number three. Uh, so thanks again for watching.